Richmond has to think, has to hit every lap perfect. You see how close Earnhardt is. He smokes the tires going in right on Tim Richmond's tail. What Tim Richmond's got to do right now, he just simply, oh, he, Earnhardt touched him and he went up the hill. They get together. Richmond almost spins the car coming off turn. Dale Earnhardt's strong arm tactics on Tim Richmond moved underneath. As the two touched, they just bowled together coming around turn three and four. And the one top customer absolutely lives up to his name. Here comes Dale Earnhardt. He will sweep both races at the Bristol International Speedway in 1985. A lot of clamming and bamming tonight. It looked like you really had to work to win this one. Tim Richmond ran an awful good race, and uh, he was tough to beat. He didn't give it to me, and uh, you know he ought to be, be a winner too. But Richard, Richard just said he just have to race him. Just keep racing him. Who is being Rusty Wallace stands off of turn four, just nudges the wall coming off the corner, it sends up a lot of smoke. The yellow is out. I'm not so sure that the car is hurt all that much. It's a fire on it, Bob. Oh yeah. He's a five-time winner here at this racetrack, including this event last year. He's won the spring race four times. See him pointing at Dale Earnhardt there? Yep. I think they got together as they came off the turn up there. Earnhardt comes in, down on the inside. Comes up. Yep. Taps him. And around he goes. And look at him work the wheel and trying to uh, save the slide. We think that uh, there may be a black flag displayed to Dale Earnhardt. We're going to see here. Yes, indeed, the uh, flagman is pointing to Dale with the black bunting. And Earnhardt is going to go to the rear of the line because of his what NASCAR considered more than incidental contact with Rusty Wallace. The fans think that was the right decision by NASCAR. Well, some of them do, some of them don't. They're down to four or five car lengths. And a slow car by Ben Earnhardt is right on his back foot. Let's see what strategy he pulls. No, LaFonte is sideways, but wins the race. Crashes, and he wins anyway. How about that? Whoa! If anybody earned their nickel tonight, it was Dale Earnhardt. To recap your race tonight, we probably need about 10 minutes. The difference of opinions between Rusty Wallace and Dale Earnhardt. Bonnie inside of Earnhardt, he taps him, going into the third corner, he gets way down on the apron of the track, coming to the white flag, there's a leader change, and Labonte takes the lead. And meanwhile, Ricky Rudd trying to... Oh, and Earnhardt spins him. spins him out. Oh, man. And Tony Stewart is involved in the crash, as is Mark Martin, Terry, or Stone and Marlin, and several others. Dale Earnhardt takes the checkered flag. Jimmy Spencer ran second. <laughs> Terry got into me in the middle of three and four, and I was going to get back to him and just rattle him. I wasn't going to wreck him, but I got to him and he turned him around. So. Didn't mean to really turn around, meant to rattle his cage over. Dale said in victory lane that he didn't mean to spin you out, he just meant to touch you. <laughs> Have you ever heard him say he means to spin anybody out? Okay. So can a guy win a race by spinning a guy out on the last lap? Is that legal? It depends who it is. And, uh, you know, in and, uh, and this circumstances, uh, uh, big thumbs up for it, I'm sure. So. Spencer, oh. Michael Walter. Here we go. Bam. Oh, hard, 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 hard. the wall. Kevin Harvick has just destroyed the front of that car. He got a little nudge. He got a little nudge from behind, and it just lost control of the car, and it turned dead right into the fence. Well, he and Biffle had been racing nose to tail. Let's ride with uh, Stanley as we flatten Harvick's car. Whoops. 
Just got back in the throttle a little harder than and Harvick did and got into the back of it. The right front is shoved under the dashboard. That's a pretty hard lick. Good thing Harvick is okay. He'll race tomorrow. Kevin Harvick, what happened out there? Well, you know, we're, our car was a little bit tight and uh, we were just trying to make it to the end and we were catching the 18 and the 23. And, you know, I always said Greg Biffle was a good guy, but uh, he's about the most impatient thing. I'll be waiting when he comes in here. Very unhappy. Very, very unhappy. Here we go. And this is Kevin Harvick going after Greg Biffle. Well, that's a shame, but you have seen how fenders and tempers can fly here at Bristol. You know, there'll be some fans mad at me for doing it, but I mean, I didn't do it on purpose. That's just racing at Bristol, hard short track racing. I'd never been coming out on purpose. I was on the receiving end at Richmond when it was just a racing deal, and it's just a racing deal here, you know? And uh, I feel bad, but that's just racing. I let Greg Biffle get away with some stuff uh, earlier last year, and uh, you know, he comes and just rams me in the ass pretty much puts us in the fence and ruins a brand new race car. There is no way I'm leaving this racetrack without telling somebody that just intentionally put me into the fence or tried to knock me out of the way how I feel. And uh, they don't like it, but uh, that's Greg Biffle for you. Well, Biffle said that he had to lift. Biffle's an idiot. That's pretty much enough. That's all you got to say. And that's the story from Kevin Harvick's viewpoint. We got a change for the lead right here. Jimmy Spencer, he's out on the bottom of the racetrack right here. They got Hermie Sadler out there, number two car. A little bit of break and get in the corner right here, Daryl. Right around the bottom. Got to let him go. Got to fall in behind him. Try to pass him back down here somewhere. Clear, clear. Come back under him sometime. But just let him go right now. Whoa, he hit him. Go. Bush got under him and muscled Jimmy Spencer. You don't see that often. Spence is hanging on for dear life. Get it up. Get it up. You're right. Outside. Outside. Now, here it is again. Like I said, get back up under him, man. Uh, there he goes. Many guys will save a car like that. Ooh. A bumper for a bumper. <laughs> White flag. All right, he's already celebrating. Don't say anything yet. Get it all around here. Dale Earnhardt, Ernie Irvin, Elliot Sadler, Rusty Wallace, and now Kurt Busch is a first time Winston Cup winner at Bristol. Jimmy Spencer, a car length ahead of Ricky Rudd for second. This whole group of guys, this was awesome. We had pitch strategy. I don't know why the eight pitted, and Jimmy Spencer forgot about what he did to me at Phoenix last year. This was an awesome run for Rubbermaid. Sharpie on the car, a million dollar offer. You can't get any better than this. This is Bristol. Hopefully, we come back in the fall race and do a double at the Sharpie 500. This is it. It's victory lane. Woo! Out here, what happened between you and the winner, Kurt Busch? Oh, he just smashed it in the back bumper of my target for uh, my target car, but uh, it had a big bullseye back there, and I guess he couldn't see too good, and he ends up winning the race that way. But but you can't race. There's a lot of things you can and can't do, and one thing you can't do is just beat and bang with people and knock them up out of the way, especially racing for the lead. And uh, you know, I, I, I notice a lot of guys don't do that, and they're they're the Winston Cup champions, like myself and Gordon did earlier in the race. And I really admire him the way he raced me, and I raced him. And some guys have to learn. They just have to learn the hard way. They could get back in the race. We're at almost left 150. We've had six Calkins, 42 cars are out on the racetrack. Boy, Robbie Gordon, Robbie. Just, he just got knocked by Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight car. And Dale Jr. is hung up back here trying to get around the 31 car. So everything's working Kurt Busch's way right now. Just like it played out for Elliott no Sadler here one year ago. Not so sure the caution wasn't a good thing. Larry cooled the tires off, let him get his breath. Think it over, have at it. When you're on that hot of tires, there, definitely a little cool down there. period. Don't hurt them, none at all. 155,000 people here today, and I'll bet no more than 100 left before the checkered flag. And Robbie, hey, what are they doing here? Well, I, Gets in the back of Junior. What happened was the 31 car raced the eight car all those last few laps there and held him up. And uh, Dale Junior got into him back here coming down pit road. Then uh, Robbie just turned him around. Whammo. Last year it was Jeff Gordon and Tony Stewart. Hey, Rob. This year it's Robbie Gordon and Earnhardt Jr. Little problem down here, little altercation with Dale Earnhardt Jr. and a couple of other folks. Dale, what's cooking? <laughs> Damn 31 wouldn't get out of the way. Lap down, racing the leaders with eight, 10 laps to go, but. 
Um, that's why he had to, that's why it takes three or four times for him to finally get into the West Cup series because he don't pay attention, he don't know what he's doing. Wow, second fight in two days down here on Pit Road. Robbie, what happened at the end of the race with Dale Earnhardt Jr.? Well, I don't know why he would be running into me after the race. I mean, he's the one that knocked me sideways early and he tried to run me into pit wall, so I hit him back. Um, you know, it's just the way it goes. You know, Bristol's, uh, Bristol's always exciting. I gotta be honest, I had a lot of fun today. Robbie, this may be a dumb question. Is this a frustrating place to race? Uh, it is because so many times you can be a victim of circumstance. Like I was running along just fine and Dale Jr. decided to, you know, move me out of the groove. I lost 20 positions right there at that point. So, uh, you know, I, I didn't quite understand why he did that that early in the race. And then after the race, why he ran into me again uh, on the side. So I don't know why I did to make him mad, but hey, nobody runs into me. Turn two is Elliot Sadler, 25 car. Joe Nemechek got a little bit, looked like he got sideways and a 21 car drifted up into him and lost the rear of the car. To me, it looks like he gets a little bit sideways getting off a of two. And he kind of came down the track because he was trying to save the car and I think he got into Elliot. I, I know that's probably not what Elliot thinks happened, but that's what it looked like from here. Talked about the emotions of racing at Bristol during our Discover Card countdown to green. A little upset. Somebody's already boiling over. Ooh, I hope he slapped that with his hand, not with his fist, because Lee Dow Schubert will be looking at his hand. Oh! Yeah. And Jimmy Johnson gets turned right in the front of Mark Martin. John Andres in the crash. Gordon just got bumped. Jeff Gordon just got. I don't know how much damage. Uh, Robbie Gordon just. Look at the this. Back of, uh, Look at this. Robbie's getting into everybody tonight. Uh, okay. Uh, Jimmy Johnson got the worst end of that, obviously. This is even before they get to turn. This is on the straightaway. That all about? I don't know what that was that, about. That was at the one to go. See, there's something going on there we haven't. We don't know about. We don't know about. So there's Jimmy. And he's not yeah. waiting to get in the ambulance, I don't think. I, I think, think he's waiting to, to wave to his favorite driver right now. Let's see. Well, maybe he was waiting to go to the ambulance. <laughs> no, 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 no. Safety worker's trying to wave him on. You know what, safety worker? I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Listen to the crowd. <laughs> oh, it's Bristol. Robbie, they're going to come in and hold you for two laps. What? It's not right because he missed the gear shift. They're going to hold me for two laps. Just like every form of racing he's ever been in, there's always it's always somebody else's fault. He had me turn sideways before we even took the green. I didn't even have a chance to grab the gear. He was beating my bumper cover off me coming to the green because he wanted to restart in front of me. I'm trying to get my lap back as well, so he's just crying up a river like he always does. It's a shame. We got a chance to win the championship, and we get, get spun out before we even take the green on a restart. It's just it's wrong. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Ward Burton were racing for 12th spot. Now Ward's in the wall. Almost identically the same spot that his teammate, Hutt Strickland, crashed. Right. Exactly. LM, we get... Yeah, I think you're gonna, if you would've heard the end of that. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't be good. we can get this thing fixed, <laughs> we're coming back out after him. All right, let's see if we can see what happened and why Ward is so upset. On board with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Come off turn two, start down the back stretch. Jr. gets a run, he thinks he has enough, but just barely makes contact with Ward, and bam, in the wall. Here, I'll talk to the 22 guy up here. That was Ty Norris, Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car. I tried spotter. to get out of it. He kind of, you know, was abrupt on his interest. Didn't give me much time. I mean, if he's gonna cut me off, they'll not, you know, give me a little bit of time to get out of the game, or he's gonna get the fun out. All right, I'll talk to him. That ain't gonna do any good, Ty. No. no. The emotions are running very, very high right now. I'd talk to him maybe next Friday. <laughs> and 
now the call goes out on the NASCAR radio for the driver and crew chief of the 22 to go to the big red truck and the race is over. That big red truck is going to be busy, I oh, think. Oh, it's going to be. Uh, Junior just didn't take his time. I mean, we've been giving and taking out there all day. I got some really good words for him, but I can't say it on TV, but <laughs> I got to just control myself right at the moment. See the back end of the 18 kick out. Okay, he got bit. into he it got right into there. Him. Moved him out of the way. So he's oh, got the lead. Back. Here comes Kyle back at him again. He's going to get to him. Yeah, gave him a little shove. Ah, the bump and run, the Bristol move. There comes Denny Hamlin right there, too. Denny Hamlin said, my turn to play. I got a bumper, too. I got a hammer in turn three, got some traffic in front of him, and Carl Edwards will come down and win for the second time in his career in Bristol, Tennessee. Kyle Busch is going to finish second, Denny Hamlin third. Oh, awesome race. Great job today. Awesome, awesome day. Carl Edwards mathematically oh, locked in. Get a little nudge here from Kyle Busch. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, they're pushing and shoving a little bit over there. I don't know what that oh, was yeah. all about. I don't think anybody saw anything wrong with what Carl Edwards did there, except for Kyle Busch. He's not very <laughs> happy about it, and that's always the case. You're going to have one guy that's not. He hit me getting into turn one, which got me a little bit loose, chattered the rear tires, but. You know, whatever. That's uh, you know, Carl's gonna say he's sorry he didn't want to race that way because he always does. You know, Mr. Ed like so. We'll take it. We'll go on, and um, you know, we'll race him that way in a chase if that's the way he wants to race. I couldn't get by him, and I couldn't get by him. And I just had to ask myself, would would he do that to me? And he has before, so that's the way it goes. They keep talking about rivalries. We might have one now. <laughs> See how far Kenseth drives it in here. He couldn't get his slide, slide job Whoa. to work quite as good. It's a lot of contact, Oh, though. no. There they go. Wow. That didn't work out for either one of them. Kenza does slide up into Stewart a little. Tony comes down, trying to pin him down a little bit. That creates contact that gets Kenza sideways. Yeah, but I thought Tony had to get down a little bit. Right here. If he, if he goes a little bit higher there, yep. I don't think he had much choice. Tony not very happy. Whoa. Yeah. That's a perfect strike. That's a nice throw. He just used one hand, didn't he? I think yeah, I'm right. Okay. I think he's got both in. Look at it. And the southpaw, too. Yeah. Joey Logano again using the middle group. Gordon the outside as they work out a four. Denny Hamlin's there. He taps the back bumper of Joey Logano. Yeah, Logano, he's really now got to play defense, and he gets a shot from Denny Hamlin. He's spinning off turn two. Matt Kenseth almost collects him. Wow, that is so unfortunate for Joey Logano. What did we say when we were watching this? If he doesn't move Jeff Gordon, somebody's going to move him. That's exactly what happened with his ex-teammate from Joe Gibbs Racing, Denny Hamlin in the 11. There is Joey Logano moments ago, who wound up 17th, and Hamlin who roughed him up wound up 23rd. You said that the Logano wouldn't take the apology over the radio lightly, and the pushing is coming to shoving here. Really, he would have been in the garage with no radiator in it had I not checked up uh, twice. So, you know, I just, um, you know, I meant to run into him. Didn't mean to, to spit him out, but. Uh, you know, his day was fine. Uh, he still had a bad day anyway for, for whatever reason. So, um, you know, it's just uh, we finished bad, he finished bad. It's, uh, you know, it's even. What did he say inside the car? Uh, I see he was coming for me. So, I usually don't see him, so it's usually not a factor. Uh, frustrating, I had a really fast shell Penzo Ford. I mean, it's Bristol, but it's it's ridiculous. It's not, um, I feel like I race him clean all the time, and uh, he's going to do that. So. Uh, I understand the way he races now that he's not my teammate, and I will race him the same way he races. Oh, Denny gets high. And Logano gets the lead. Elliott's going to get second. And maybe the lead. Oh, yes. Chase wow. sends it and takes the lead. And Denny goes around. Goes into the wall with McLeod. Is Logano faster in the bottom than Chase is up top? Oh, yes, he is. He's going to get that lead. But can he keep it? Three to go. Wow, what a battle here. They touch. A little bump and run there from Chase Elliott. Oh. They're up and in the wall. Here comes Keslowski wow. and Kyle Busch. 
the part that's frustrating is afterwards a simple apology, like be a man, come up to someone and say, hey, like my bad. But uh, I had to force an apology, which to me is just childish. Um, but, but golly, man, be a man and take, take the hit when you're done with it. I hate we both wrecked. I don't know uh, if I had a tire going down or if I just got loose on entry, but as soon as I turned off the wall, I had zero chance in making it. So, you know, I'll, I'll certainly take the blame. I feel like I had to keep him behind me right there in order to win the race with only, you know, three or four laps to go. So, uh, I hate, you know, I hate we both wrecked. You know, can't go back in time now. Oh, Whoa. see Bubba Wallace moving. Yep. Michael McDowell up the racetrack. Oh, it's Michael oh, turn just it. turned around Man. and hard in the wall. Bubba Wallace, no. Now you don't have to finish on the lead lap or anything else, but you have to be able to compete. And that car that is done. destroyed. See the dejection of Wallace's demeanor as he walks back to the garage area. 17 laps in. Oh, just disrespect. And when you get when you get hooked into the wall, my hair looks terrible. Sorry, mom. Um, when you get hooked right rear in the wall, it's uh, I've already I don't even need to see a replay. Look at that. Shit. Yeah, wow. One of the people say one of the nicest guys in the garage. Can't wait for the Godfaring text that he's gonna send me about preaching and praise and respect. What a joke he is.